we want to share our favorite camping memberships with you. And we love these camping memberships. They save us time, money, and they make our camping experience much more enjoyable. But which ones are best for you and why? Stick around, folks. You're going to want to find out. Hey everybody, we're Mike and Susan with RV Blogger and today, like we said, we want to share some of our favorite camping memberships with you. Now we did a video similar to this a few years ago, but our camping lifestyle has changed quite a bit since then. So we've discovered other memberships that benefit us better and also there are some updates to some of our previously memberships that we still use today. Absolutely, and in addition to all that, we're gonna run through each one of these memberships and talk about who they may be best for, like what kind of camper would benefit most from these memberships. And then we'll run through a little bit of pros and cons for each one of the memberships as well, so you can see if some of these memberships might be good for you. And make sure you stick around till the end of the video because we're gonna share our very favorite membership that we belong to. We absolutely love it and we've contacted the owner of the company and we have a great discount for you. So stick around to the end so you can get all that great information too. But without any further ado, let's get into our review of our favorite camping memberships. The campground membership that we use by far more than all others is now Thousand Trails. Yeah, we bought our Thousand Trails membership back in March and here it is August, so we've got you know, six months of using yeah. it. We saved a bunch of money right. using that camp, using that membership. And that's why we joined. Right. Uh, we're on the road a lot. And yeah. so for us, it made great sense mm -hmm. to go ahead and invest in the campground membership and then save money over the course of the and year. And what Thousand Trails is, is you, you purchase your membership and then that gives you the ability to stay at Thousand Trails campgrounds, Encore campgrounds for free. Right. They have packages for any kind of camper, whether you're a weekender, whether you travel for a week camping vacation or full timers right or you know most timers or most timers like us <laughs> which is kind of more like us so it just depends we're not going to go through and review all the different memberships because it is extremely there's confusing there's a lot to learn um, it took us a while to learn it. Mm -hmm. It would take us two hours of a video to explain it all right. to you. And we don't even know it well enough we to don't. describe it to you. We yeah. wouldn't do it justice. But, but anyway, that's, that's the gist of it. So it can fit a wide variety of campers. What you have to look for is if you're a weekender or a vacation style camper, camper are there enough Thousand Trails close enough to you to make it worth buying a package or not, right? Because you don't you know, you want to, you might only travel 150 miles around where you live. And if there's only 1000 trails in that area, it may or may not be worth it to you to, to do that. For us, we travel around the country. And so it was mm -hmm. totally worth it to us because we're everywhere all the time anyway. Right. Um, so it, it, we can take advantage of all of the campgrounds and maximize our membership that way. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I would break that down. Um, now there are some pros and cons to Thousand Trails and we'll Correct. run through those as well. So mm -hmm. you want to hit the pros and I'll do the cons? Okay. All right. So like we mentioned, the pro for us is the amount of money that we save at campgrounds. I mean, we, we took a snapshot of uh, several months of camping and we spent thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But in the six months that we've had Thousand Trails, we've saved what, 6,800? Like 6,800 bucks. So, it saves you a ton of money if you can, you know, travel in the area where there are thousand trails. Absolutely. And we know tons of people that have thousand trails and they say the same thing. They right. save a ton of money on campground yeah. fees. And the other uh, pro is that most of the campgrounds are pretty nice. Now we have come across some that, you know, might need a little maintenance or a little updating. Yeah. But for the most part, you have your water, electric and sewer. Um, you have some decent amenities, spacious lots. There are going to be some campgrounds that aren't quite as up to date, but for the most part, the campgrounds that we've seen, we've enjoyed. Yeah. You know? And we're staying for free, so we're not complaining. We're at one right now. We're at a thousand trails <laughs> right. as we speak. Yeah. And you can see there's a putt putt golf behind us, there's a swimming pool, there's kids' right. playgrounds, there's yeah. horseshoe pits. Yeah, you know, there's they something got for everyone. Lots of stuff, yeah. lots of activities and amenities. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a pretty nice yeah. campground. And the other positive or pro for us was that we can stay longer. Yeah. So we've learned to slow down in our travels. Yep. Uh, everyone says it, you don't know it till you experience it, but you gotta slow down. Yeah. And so we can stay at some campgrounds for two to three weeks. 
and that gives us the chance to get some work done, to travel, to slow down, enjoy the lifestyle. And so a Thousand Trails offers that as a great option to be yeah. able to do that. Yeah, it is fantastic. We can stay up to 21 days. Right. Some, some pack, all the packages are different. All packages are different. But our package allows us to stay up to three weeks, which is really great. Right. Now, some of the cons with Thousand Trails, the biggest one is you have to pay all that money up front to buy the membership. Um, but we're going to make all of our membership money back in the first year and then some. Right. Uh, we will come out ahead in year one for sure. And then you just pay a small maintenance fee each year thereafter. And so we'll be way ahead mm -hmm. uh, as you look at the long term. Right. Um, so that's one of the cons. And then the other part of it is that there's a learning curve to understanding which one of the packages is best for you. Um, not only do they sell new packages, but you can buy used packages from people that already own a Thousand Trails membership. And so trying to figure out which package you should buy, whether it's new or used or elite mm -hmm. VIP or just down to a zone package, it takes some time to right. figure it all out. And mm -hmm. it took us quite a bit of time and a it lot did. of phone calls. A lot of phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it figured out. And we'll put some links in the notes down below of who we contacted right. regarding new and used memberships so you can get the best advice mm -hmm. too uh, and contact these folks directly. They're great to work with and we'll stick them in the notes down below. Um, another frustrating part of Thousand Trails is their reservation system. You know, the software system that they use is just, it's just not as good as more modern campgrounds. It's very frustrating sometimes. Um, their calendar doesn't really work very well. We find ourselves either calling or, or use the chat using feature. the chat feature to yeah. book most of our reservations. And that mm -hmm. really, really helps quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, another one of the negatives that you'll hear from people is they don't assign you a campsite. So when you get to a thousand mm -hmm. trails, you kind of have to drive around until you find your site. Um, that doesn't really bother us so much. In the beginning, we were a little put off by it. We yeah. were like, oh, well, you know, we want to just reserve that spot while we're online yeah. and be done with it. Um, but we've learned it's okay. You, it's an easy workaround. It is. Again, and you're staying for free. <laughs> yeah, we're willing to deal with that. And Thousand Trails is working towards improving that system, mm -hmm. so they will be able to assign sites mm -hmm. in the future at some point. I don't know when that's going to happen. And then finally, their campground locations are really around the whole perimeter of the United States, but there's really not many in the middle of America. So if you're on the coasts from Maine all the way to Florida, through Texas, all the way up the California coast, to, through Oregon and Washington, that's where they're all located. So if you're camping in Montana or you know, in the middle of the country, there just Kansas. aren't as, <laughs> Kansas, there just aren't as many locations there. So, you have to think about where you're going to be and where you're going to camp to see if a membership is really going to make sense for you. Another one of our favorite memberships that we use quite often is Harvest Hosts. And Harvest Hosts purchase Boondockers Welcome, and so now it's Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome. And they also have an awesome golf package as well. So if you're a golfer, you can stay at, I don't know, like 450 different mm -hmm. golf courses all around the country for free get in a round of golf and enjoy that experience as well. Now Harvest Hosts uh, and Boondockers Welcome and the golf package are really for people that are traveling from point A to point B. They're not a place where you can go camping for a weekend or even a week, you it's know. One night. It's one night. You're in, you enjoy it, and you're on your way to your final destination wherever that's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's how we use it as well. When we have a long drive, we don't want to drive 10 hours in a day. We'll, we'll drive five, stay at a Harvest Host or a Boondockers Welcome, and then continue on the next day to our campground destination. Mm -hmm. And that's really what these packages are all about. Now, the great thing um, about them is they're everywhere. There's over 8,500 locations. If you add up all the Harvest Hosts, Boondockers Welcome, and golf course locations around the country. So this is a membership that can work for just about anyone, yeah. really, no matter where you are. And it can fill in the gaps if you're going between campground to campground. Um, you know, maybe they can't get you in that one night. Well, that's no problem. You could just stay at a Harvest Host until right. your reservation starts. Right. And another great point you brought up earlier uh, off camera was uh, sometimes we have, you know, we're, we're driving to our campground, but we're going to get there late. You know, we might oh, not yeah. get there till six, seven o'clock at night. And now you've just spent a hundred, hundred twenty-five dollars, hopefully less on a campground site 
and you really are just going to go to bed. Yeah, you pull up at seven o'clock and you go, you know, you're going to go to bed. You're going to go to sleep. Right. So instead, if you stay at a Harvest Host or a Boondockers Welcome, now you can get to your campground earlier the next day and enjoy the full day's activity and expense. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And we've done that a bunch of times. Right. Like if we know we're showing up late, we'll just Harvest Host it the night before mm -hmm. and save the money and show up the next day early at the right. campsite. So. Right. All right, well, let's run through our pros and cons of okay. Harvest Host Boondockers Welcome and the golf cart package, okay. the golf course package. Right. So uh, I think my one of my favorites are the beautiful locations. Oh, yeah. Typically, you're going to be staying at a really nice winery, brewery, museum. Um, and, you know, it's just a, it's a little bit better than going to a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel, though we love those too. Yep. But this definitely does give you a prettier atmosphere. I like it for the beautiful destinations. I do too. We stayed yeah. at some beautiful places. Farms, right. churches, they have ice cream stands. We stayed at John Schneider's place in yes. Louisiana. John Schneider was on Dukes of Hazard. Yes. Like amazing. Right. Got to see Daisy Dukes posters and all <laughs> kinds of cool stuff. Yes. Um, and again, like I said, meeting the owner and getting a toast, taste of the local culture. Um, and also being able to support these local businesses. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they don't have to offer their locations for free, but it sure is nice that they do. And by being able to purchase a bottle of wine or, you know. Buy some fruits and vegetables buy at a some farm. From the farm. And, and being able to give back to the community is, is a really nice. Yeah, we really I, enjoy, I enjoy that. that. Yeah, for sure. Now, some of the cons with it are you can only stay one night. You know, there are some great locations and we've wanted to stay two or three nights uh, because maybe we're in between campgrounds and we have to fill two or three nights. But for the most part, you can only stay one night. You can request more and see if they'll be OK with that. And some locations actually allow you to stay longer. Um, but for the most part, it is only one night that you're allowed to stay. Um, another um, con of Harvest Hosts um, and the golf courses is that they don't have any hookups. So you'll need to be able to be self-sufficient when you stay there uh, in your RV. So you got to have a bathroom, you got to, you know, you better uh, either have to keep yourself cool or warm. You, yes, that's true too. <laughs> uh, if you don't, if you can't run your air conditioner, you don't have a generator, um, things like that can be a problem too. Mm -hmm. So you want to look out for all those things. And then finally, one thing people don't know about Boondockers Welcome is that in Boondockers Welcome, you're literally staying at someone's home, usually right in their driveway. And usually they're a fellow RVer, so they're happy to host you for the night. Um, and they like to talk to you and you can get great tips and information from them. Most of the times from Boondockers Welcome, though, you can get electric and water because they can hook you right up to their house, even if it's just an extension cord. So over 75 percent of boondockers welcome locations actually have partial mm -hmm. hookups available right. we've stated some that had full hookups yes which was phenomenal right but um between all three memberships you know you're really in pretty good shape to spend a couple of nights there right now we have we have had people kind of criticize the fact that you have to uh visit the store and maybe purchase from the place that you're staying at the harvest host uh, we have a facebook group rv camping for newbies if you haven't checked that one out already <laughs> please check it out <laughs> um, and and that that subject has come up yeah. and my advice is number one you are staying there for free so it is very hospitable to purchase something from the farm or winery or wherever um, but the other thing is check out the menu if the costs are a little too high for you and it's like you know i can't spend that much money on a bottle of wine there's no shame in that i'm sure there's another one close in proximity oh, that you can everywhere. still stay at and still be able to take advantage of harvest host and also be gracious to your host yeah absolutely so some people see that as a con we figure we're gonna buy a bottle of yeah. wine or buy some i'm gonna beer eat dinner anyway eat dinner somewhere. <laughs> what's the difference right uh, let's support a local business instead of a chain restaurant and enjoy the experience and really you know get more out of it that way i think right so the third campground membership that we enjoy is called passport america and there's about 1200 locations um, and it's geared more for the weekday campers so if camping vacations are your style and you're going out for a week or two at a time, this would be the right campground membership for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly not something that you would want to use if you're a weekend warrior. 
Uh, it just won't work for you that way. But like Susan said- And we can said, explain to you why in the cons. We're gonna jump into that in just a second. <laughs> if you're a weekday camper though, this is a great membership for you. So right. let's run through the pros and cons of Passport America. So the biggest pro with Passport America is that you can save up to 50% on your campground fees on weeknights. So that would be Sunday through Thursday night. So it's a really, really nice discount that you'll get. We stayed at plenty of campgrounds that were, you know, mm -hmm. 75 or 80 bucks a night and we literally paid half of that. Right. They also have some discounts that are lower than that. Some campgrounds might only offer 20% or 40%, but a lot of them offer all the way up to 50%. So you can save a good bit of money there. Um, their website is really, really good and easy mm -hmm. to use and it goes through and explains each campground in detail, all the amenities that are there, and it tells you point blank what days you can get the discounts and which days you can't. So it's very, very easy to mm -hmm. figure all of that out. And their map system is pretty good too in terms of locating past uh, Port America campgrounds too. And finally, the third thing is it's only 44 bucks. It's really cheap. Now yeah. we didn't mention all the prices of the others, but because they're kind of you got to get into the weeds a little bit, but for mm -hmm. Passport America, it's 44 bucks. If you use our discount code, you can get four months added for free. Right. Uh, it's RV Blogger. So you can recover the cost of your membership within the first time that you use it. Yeah, you can, by go, far. Camp you can go camping <laughs> one time. One night and you will get your $44 back. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we say two nights to be safe, but for sure. I mean, you can say you can get your money back yeah. really, really fast. Um, so those are the pros of using yeah. Passport America. And the only con that we can really find is the fact that it's not weekends and it's not holidays. Right. So, but there is a little box in each uh, description for each campground that'll give you the notes. And in that informational notes, we'll tell you if there's any exceptions, if the weekends, the holidays, certain days of the week, certain times of the year. Yep. So if there's any reason why this particular campground doesn't accept your Passport Amer America membership, it's it will be in that box so yeah. honestly that's really the only con the only other one i could think of is that just like every campground in the country some are nicer than others right same is true in passport right. america some are nicer than others mm -hmm. just read some reviews and figure out if you'd like to stay there or not we right. we do that all the time and thank mm -hmm. you for everyone who does make a campground thank you for review. the reviews yes we try to do them too and we just feel like it we all learn from each other it and that way difference. you know you don't make a bad decision about where to stay so make right. sure you read the reviews but most of the places we've stayed have been fine mm -hmm. so the next campground that we use quite a bit is our koa campground membership now unlike thousand trails koas are really set up because they choose locations where there's a lot of uh, of things that you want to see in the area but for folks that do any kind of camping, whether it's weekend camping or long-term camping, KOAs are a great choice. The membership is only 36 bucks, uh, so it's relatively cheap. So we'll run down the pros and cons of the KOA for you. And like Mike said, you do save 10% at the campground each night, so that will add up. It does, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but we're staying at the KOA in the Keys next winter, and it's expensive, so 10% of that's a lot of money. But yeah. You know, it, it does add up and uh, it you helps take out. every take every discount you can get. Absolutely. And you can have peace of mind at a KOA because most of them are very similar. Um, they will have full hookups. Yep. Uh, sometimes they even have a paved campsite. They have the playgrounds, the swimming pools. So they have tons of amenities um, and they're consistent no matter where you go because they are a corporate business. Um, the other is they are always located in pretty good destinations. So wherever you might want to go sightseeing, you know, you will find a KOA relatively close to wherever you are. Absolutely. So if it's more about being able to stay in close proximity to what you want to see, then you'll find a KOA. Yeah. And they're sure. a good choice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. What about the cons? Well, there really aren't many cons that I can think of about right. a KOA. The, the, the only one I can think of is, you know, the price. Yes. I would say their pricing is definitely on the above average side of campground right. pricing. But again, if you're staying um, near the destination that you want to visit, maybe worth it to you to pay a little bit more money mm -hmm. to camp right near the attractions that you want to right. see. So it's a little bit of give it's and take there. 
Yeah, but for the most part, really, that's the only con that I have about KOA. We we stayed at plenty of them, right? And we've always had good experiences. They fill in they fill in gaps for us a lot when we are traveling with our thousand trails. Yep. Um, if we need to stay someplace longer than a night or two, so we can't use Harvest Host, then we'll fill the gap in with KOA. Sure. We'll fill the gap in with Passport America, whatever. Yep. But this is one that we will definitely choose. Absolutely. The fifth campground membership on our list is the Dirt Pro. And that is a membership that anyone can take advantage of. And it's also really good for boondockers, which you, we are experiencing a little bit more of that ourselves recently. And so we've been able to take advantage of those free boondocking locations Absolutely. on Dirt Pro. Absolutely, and it's been great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so let's run through the pros and cons. Let's go take a look at the pros. I'll do the pros. Okay. All right, the Dirt Pro. Um, is a full suite of applications that you can use for your camping experience. So first of all, they have tons of great campground reviews and they have a very robust program for rewarding their members for creating campground reviews. And so there's a lot of very good review information on there. We've used it quite a bit to mm -hmm. figure out which campgrounds we should stay in and which ones we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, the Dirt Pro also offers discounts to campgrounds, much like Passport America does. Uh, with the Dirt's program, they are also mostly on weekdays. They offer discounts up to 40% off of campgrounds, and they also have around a thousand campgrounds uh, that they're working with that offer these discounts. So, being a member of the Dirt Pro, you can certainly earn back your $36 membership fee in one night if you save 40% at a campground. So, that's a really great. Pro and the price itself is very affordable as well. Um, they also have a feature on there where you can find overnight parking like Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, you know, Home Depots, all the Loves gas stations, all those places that allow you to just park your RV overnight and sleep and get up and leave in the morning. So they have that tool available. But in addition to that, it also lists dump stations and water fill stations in the area as well. Which kind of leads me to my next point, which is if you're a boondocker, it is terrific for you folks that are going to try to find free spots to camp on BLM land or U.S. forestry land. Um, it's got terrific maps for that that are downloadable to your phone. So if you lose your cell signal, you can still get to where you're going. Um, so their, their um, boondocking and free camping part of their membership is really really terrific now we've used it a couple times to find mm -hmm. free camping spots that were just right unbelievable found a beautiful spot in new mexico it was great <laughs> i mean it was just really really unbelievable right and then finally they do have a trip planner uh, that you can also use so you can find campgrounds along your route let's say you're going from like we do every year from maryland to florida you know you can track your route and it'll help you find campgrounds all along the way um, and so that's a nice feature to have mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as cons go. Yeah, the only con that we really could come up with is the fact that you can export that trip planning tool, but you have to export it to Google Maps. Yeah, the trip planning tool itself is very basic. Yeah, uh, so you're not gonna be able to put in, you know, the specs of your RV right. to make sure you avoid bridges, bridges tunnels. tunnels you know, roads that you just shouldn't be traveling on with an RV. So right. um, so it does have the export. You can export that to Google Maps, but... But Google Maps is not appropriate to use mm -hmm. if you're driving an RV. It's just not. Neither is Waze, if you don't know that. Right. Because neither of those apps really allow you to put your mm -hmm. RV information in. Mm -hmm. And trust us, we used Waze one time and got stuck <laughs> at a bridge. We couldn't go under. Yeah. It was no we learned fun. our lesson the Rush hard way. Rush hour traffic. <laughs> and man, did we create a big problem. But yeah, that's really the only con to the right. to the dirt. It's a very it's good. It's only membership. thirty-six dollars, and you will get so much more information, so much so much more beneficial. Absolutely. So now this brings us to our truly our favorite <laughs> camping membership, and that's RV Life and RV Trip Wizard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, we use them almost every All single the time. day. And this is for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you're a weekender, a vacationer, or a full timer, what have you. The amount of resources you can get from RV Life is is exponential. You will benefit from this greatly. Absolutely. So, so why don't we run through the pros? Yeah, and we'll cons. just jump right into the pros. So the pros are 
this is hands down the best trip planning tool on the market that's out there in my opinion i mean i literally use it we both use it yeah. every day and we've used it for years yes <laughs> we have used it for years probably coming up on five years yes now. uh it's terrific it will find it's it'll plan your route for you it'll help you find every kind of campground that you'd like plus other areas of interest whether it's gas stations grocery stores walmarts uh veterinary liquor places liquor stores <laughs> hospitals casinos anything. hospitals you yeah. name it you can filter to find anything that you want to find along your way and that's also counting like you know, other attractions like museums and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing in terms of being able to tr plan your trips and not just your campgrounds, but everything else you need along the way from gas stations to Walmarts, the whole nine yards. Um, it also has over 26,000 campgrounds listed. So it's got a ton of campgrounds. If there's a campground out mm -hmm. there, it's, it's in RV Trip Wizard. And it'll list like your KOAs. Yeah. All your Passport Americas passport are in Americas, there. Passport Americas, Thousand Trails. Yep. You know. All of that stuff's mm -hmm. in there. Uh, so it really makes trip planning super, super easy mm -hmm. uh, and, and faster than if you didn't have that tool. Mm -hmm. Now there's also 600,000 reviews from your fellow RVers on RV Trip Wizard. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. We use those reviews all the time. Right. And it's super easy to toggle from the campground on your planning map to the reviews of the campground and back to the campground on your map to see if you want to add it to your trip. Right. It really makes life so much easier. And we've saved a lot of time and money by not showing up at campgrounds that don't have good ratings right. or showing up the, to the ones that really do. Right. So it's been fantastic that way. The other great thing is uh, we love it because the app in, uh, on your phone is your GPS and it connects to RV trip wizard. So when you plan your trips, you pull up your phone app, you can pull up the trips right off the computer into your phone. No exporting of no anything. No exporting and all this stuff. Automatically it's there. Automatic. It's just boom, you open your app and there are your trips. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to enter addresses and all this other stuff. You just hit the navigate button and you get turn by turn directions to get you from your wherever you are to wherever you want to be it just couldn't be easier right and uh, we absolutely love that feature now they also have uh, an rv life uh, maintenance tracker mm -hmm. that you can tr use to track all the maintenance needs on your rv so if it, if you have a motorhome for example and you know that you have a 15,000 and a 30,000 and a 80,000 and a 100,000 mile checkup or you can you can put them all in there so you'll get reminders to make sure you take your rig in and have it serviced. Oil changes is another thing you can list in there to make sure you're getting those done every three to five to 7,000 miles, however you do it. Um, but it's a terrific tool that you can use as well and it's all included. And then finally, they have fantastic customer service. Mm -hmm. Now, I use it all the time and so I'm on there all the time and I tell you, even just this past weekend, I emailed the guys and said, hey, I'm having a problem with the calendar. It was my own fault. It wasn't theirs. But they emailed me back on Sunday with the answer. So I had my answer right then and there. Their customer service is terrific. We absolutely love it. Right. So now we have the cons of RV Trip Wizard, and I'll let Susan run through those. <laughs> and luckily, there are very few. <laughs> <laughs> there really aren't many. <laughs> Um, so Mike did talk to you about the trip planning tool and when you do get on your computer and you take a look at that it'll take you a little while to navigate through the system. Uh, we recommend watching some tutorials on how to do that. There yeah. are so many amazing features that the trip planning tool has that it will take you a little while. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Just yeah. do a little research and you'll navigate your way through that. I would say in a half an hour to an hour you can learn how to be very functional on RV Trip Wizard and mm -hmm. planning your trip. Uh, we've even made a video about how to use RV Trip Wizard, but there are tons of them out there on the, on the internet and also on the RV Trip Wizard website. Right. And you can, like I said, you invest a half an hour to an hour and it will save you tons of hours down the road. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we've heard from in our Facebook group, remember RV Camping for Newbies, was <laughs> <laughs> the difference in time between what uh, Trip Wizard will tell you in how long it'll take for you to get to your destination versus if you bring up Google Maps or Waze. Yeah. And so people will be like, well, why does Trip Wizard say it's going to take five and a half hours and Google Maps says four and a half hours? 
because it's not taking into consideration your drive speed. You're not gonna be driving the speed limit or above, I hope. You're probably gonna be maintaining a slower speed. And it's also gonna take you on routes that are a little different than where you need to travel using Google Maps or Waze because it's taken into consideration the specs of your RV. Right. So we've done that side-by-side -side comparison. We yeah. do it almost every time. We do it a lot just to have fun with it. Yeah, we do it to have fun and because, you know, we do want to make sure like, oh, you know, why isn't it taking us this way or what's going on over here? And, you know, plus, let's face it, Waze will let you know if there's police officers around. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, that, that comes in handy. So don't mind that. but. It's always, RV Trip Wizard always gets us there in the time in which it says it is. Yeah, I would say that time is more accurate on RV, RV Trip, Trip Wizard. RV Trip Wizard, not Google Maps, not Waze. Not Waze, no. So don't let that freak you out. It, it is what it is. Go by Trip Wizard, you'll be safer. And, and add time to it anyway, because you're going to stop and go to the bathroom, and you're going to stop and eat anyway. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, uh, we know the owner of RV Trip Wizard personally. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, we've worked with him a lot, and so he was gracious enough to give us a discount that we can offer to everyone who follows us or anyone watching this video. And if you just use RV Blogger 25 as your discount code when you sign up for RV Trip Wizard, you will save 25% off the membership price, which is currently $65. So mm -hmm. it's a very nice savings and I guarantee you will love this trip planning tool mm -hmm. and it will make your life a whole lot easier. So these are our six favorite campground memberships. They save us money, they save us time, and they make our camping experience a lot more enjoyable. And we're not saying you should go out and buy all six of these either. <laughs> we're, we're trying to point out that some memberships work better for some people right. than others. We camp so often that we use them all. But if you're a weekend warrior or a vacation style camper, not all of these memberships are certainly gonna work for you. Right. So check them out, see which ones work for you, and. Maybe it'll make your life a little easier too and you'll save some money as well. Right. But let us know in the comments down below which camping memberships you use, whether it's these or others that are out there, mm -hmm. why you like them, if you don't like them, why you don't like them. We would love to hear from everybody on those, on those memberships so we can all learn from one another. Maybe there's a membership out there that's totally awesome that we don't even know about. Right. We could be using it right now. So <laughs> we'll see you guys in the comments. And if you wanna learn very quickly and easily how to use RV Trip Wizard. You can check out our video that we made about how to use RV Trip Wizard in the box down below. And so Susan and I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, that just took a picture for some reason. I know, that's why I posed. <laughs> You're pulling my hair, man. I like it, okay, away. But let's go ahead and run through our list of pros and cons. <laughs> you already did. Unless I already did. <laughs> so allow us a more and little bit. But let us know, so the fa the 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 the